Welcome back everyone, this is the VG Pierce. I'll be coming at you with some Season 14 action for the Cabal Vision Champions Cup Playoffs as we are set to see the Final Four and also it's the 2018 Blood Bowl 2 World Cup tickets as we already see Notorious NOOB and Ducky and Ungern and of course Jimmy Fantastic winning the MML going through Going through is playing weird, you say? Uh, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> um, it's just Blood Bowl 2 music, isn't it? I can't, I can't really say much for that. Um, but don't worry, my my talking will be too much for it, and then we'll be changing to the game. So don't worry about the music. <laughs> All right, but yes. These players here will be moving on to the 2018 Blood Bowl 2 World Cup. And not only that, guys, but they will be, at least in this tournament, 100 euros for the trouble, at least for third and fourth place, 250 for second, and then 500 euros for first place, all brought to you by Cyanide Focus Home Entertainment. So let's go ahead, jump into the last game as we see Spartico taking on Crystal Hunter's Skaven team. Who's going to get the better of it? I just don't know. Let's just jump in there. And see. And of course, in my preliminary prediction, I did say that I like Crystal Hunter's Skaven team. Oh, you dirty little rats, you. But man, this is going to be a good one to be had. Is this Chaos team? Uh, you know, they're not looking too healthy. They're not looking too healthy, whereas the rats, well, they look quite good here. Chaos team, coached by Spartaco, Gladiatori. We'll be facing off against the Skaven team, the Rat, or Dead Baron, the coach by Crystal Hunter. Yeah, I'm not sure why it got distorted at Wayne Fair, but thanks for that. But like I said, we're starting up this game, and so the music will just go away, because it's just the Blood Bowl 2 music in the background. And now we are on the way as the coin flip is getting decided, and Gladiatori will actually opt to kick off to the Skaven team. So there we go, Gladiatori. Giving it to the Skaven team. And uh, we'll be starting off Wizard in hand for both of these guys. With the bribe and the extra APO. Big time inducements from both sides. I can't believe it there. But of course, real quick, let's just take a look at both of these side skills. As you can see, the Beast Man there, two heads. With the blodge ability, sure hands with a leader ability, and then of course the Dauntless. Claw, Mighty Blow, piling on tackle. With that block ability for the Beast Man, then the Chaos Warrior with that black and the guard ability. In the front line, then you see the black and guard for the Beast Man right there, and the Chaos Warrior. More black and guard here. And then of course another Beast Man, very threatening. Gonna have more Claw, more Mighty Blow with that. With that Dauntless and the tackle, block abilities, more block. And Mighty Blow Claw with the piling on abilities. Just so dangerous. Dirty player as well. And the block. Boy, this is yet another kill team you have to really watch out for. But I think the biggest darnest thing about this Chaos team is just not too many guys with tackle. Look, just one, two players with that tackle ability. Can they catch up to the gutter runners? Oh my gosh, my voice is broke. Can they catch up to those gutter runners? That will be the question here today. But first, take a look at the Skaven team, though. Oh, it does have a Beast Man to come in. Let's take a look at the Skaven team, though. It does have that Storm Vermin. does have the Tackle and the Mighty Blow with that Guard ability on them. does have the Line right here with the Kick, Block, and Defend ability. Dirty Rat. And does have a Block, plus one Strength, and that Mighty Blow for that Storm Vermin. And then the Line right here with the Wrestle ability. And then the gutter runners, of course, will have them with <laughs> the shadowing gutter runner. Just so much haunting to Jimmy Fantastic Scam. If you guys haven't caught that game, definitely check it out. But man, this gutter runner, <laughs> just an absolute pain to deal with. Sidestep with that fan blodge. And then plus one in the move last tackle with that wrestle. Sidestep with that gutter runner. And then the big hand leap with that blodge. Sidestep can definitely get to the backfield and grab up against any tackle zones because, you know, big hand negates those things and then strip ball wrestle dauntless tackle that's the main ball hawk here for the Skaven team does have the thrower 
with that leader block ability. And quite a number of line rats to come in for the Skaver team. You all ready for this? I am definitely ready for this. Loads of fun to be had. Crystal Hunter says, enjoy the match because this is going to be a grueling test before, be, between these two great players. Or two great coaches, I should say. There's a big debate going on. Who's who's going to be the likely... Well, who are we going to see in the World Cup, right? We're going to see Dwarves. We're going to see Wood Elves for sure. Dark Elves. I mean, those are going to be the biggest givens, right? I mean, you pick Dwarves because you just like to play Bash and you really want to take advantage of all the Dwarves. Um, the, the Elves in the, in the first bit there. So you'll be able to roll over those guys. And... You may see some orcs as well because blitzers with mighty blow and tackle so strong and definitely could deal with just about any elven team that they may play against, right? Not only that, but have the black orcs on the front line. Just need to get them blocked and they'll be good. Maybe guard as well. What do the different colors mean? The orange, purple, green? I <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean, Wayfair. I am not sure what you mean. Hmm. Looks like I took away the false skills already. Hey hey, Satterfield, nice to see you today. You're just missing out. This is the last game on my on the channel here that I'll be casting. Next week we'll see the semi-finals, the final four teams. And a bit of a a bit of a preview to the 2018 Bubble 2 World Cup coming up by the end of July. You'll know when it's starting soon. You'll see the Champions Cup Invitational for any of the Champions Cup players who or Champions Cup coaches who did not get a ticket playing within the Champions Cup. We are keeping score for those per people and they will have a last chance tournament. But for those of you watching out there who may be making that Champions Cup Invitational, five tickets are going out to the PC, two are going out to the PS4, and one will be going out to the Xbox 3... Uh, well, I, I, not 360. The Xbox One. So... It's going to be a bit of a cross-platform cup. Not only that, but it will be the people who have not been able to earn a ticket playing within the Champions Cup. And the PS4 players will just automatically receive a free copy to the PC versions so that they can play within this Champions Cup Invitational. But they will need to play during certain times. Top two players ending up will get a ticket. The last two tickets to the Invitational. There's going to be a big injury there caused by this Chaos team. So the Apothecary is going to be used right then and there on the plus one in strength Storm Vermin. So a big hit there and a big usage. As this Chaos team really needs to get the hurt on and he does. There's another rat going down. That's just a 30 rat though. But don't need to worry about him getting some fouls in later on tell you that much chaos team trying to get more two die blocks in will get the hits in and hopefully be able to get more on the value breaks on the week on the value seven this is what the chaos team really needs to have happen if they're going to have a chance at this game here But as I was saying there before, if you guys are watching out there, Champions Cup Invitational will be on July... The first game will be will need to be played by July 4th. But the semi, but the uh, second round and the third round, there's only three rounds. So the second round will need to be played on July 11th, I believe. And then July 12th will be the Grand Finals for that. And oddly enough, July 4th is on, I believe, a Wednesday. And then it takes another week, and then it's going to be yet another Wednesday and Thursday game. So I don't know what 
what they were thinking. I think somebody had the wrong calendar up and was like, oh, these are the weekends. <laughs> but they are not the weekends. Fireball coming straight out right there. Nice hits here. We'll get the ball out, but none of the other rats are going to suffer any types of knockdowns or injuries or whatsoever. But the ball is out. And it's actually going to be scattering in an okay spot. Maybe that the Chaos team will be able to get to. Ooh, it's not going to be an easy spot whatsoever, but at least it's going to be on the right side, not on the left side. And piloting on. Mighty Blow will be able to get him down. And... Uh, Might be able to continue on with the bashing fun as Crystal Hunter is gonna get fireballed right there. But the fireball, not, not really a big whiff because the ball did come out and it did stun the main ball carrier, but not, not extremely detrimental. Would have liked to see one or two more guys go down to that fireball and then would have had a little bit of an easier time there. At this moment, though, it is marked up three ways and unlike the the gutter runner with the big hand the chaos team does not have a big hand ball carrier so likely going to be trying to get this ball pick up against two tackle zones but not before getting a big injury on the big hand gutter runner and of course the apothecary already being used for the storm vermin the big hand gutter runner is out so oh boy if this ball gets into a bit of a scrum here on the ground then this is going to be all too much would have loved to have that big hand gutter runner in the match but there's going to be the failed gfi going to be able to pick it up on the six but trying to dodge away from danger won't be able to do so oh boy that should have been an easy dodge away but unfortunately going to get the one on a GFI, actually not even a dodge away, is it? No, it was a dodge away, so mm -mm -mm. let's go for that. Well, it rolled the GFI, and I guess does the GFI before the dodge? I don't know. But anyways, the ball is going to come out, and the GFI is going to fail it there. Oh, yes, indeed. And the gutter runners does gutter runner things. And he's going to get the ball pick up and easily is going to be able to get the touchdown. Crystal Hunter will get the score after the GF5 failure. <laughs> Juanian is just like, I'm just a 10 movement gutter runner, don't mind me. <laughs> And right there, easy touchdown for the one move touchdown threat. Skaven team and will be scoring it pretty quickly. Chaos team will be getting the ball back now. <laughs> Click end zone. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. So now the Chaos team. Does have lots of rounds to get his own touchdown coming up. Lots of rounds to be had so the Chaos can grind it out on the Skaven team. Hopefully get injuries along the way. And get into a little bit of advantage going into the second half. Second half he does have the ball in hand. But the Wizard for Crystal Hunter could be negating some of that. As the Chaos team has already used their wizard, so Chaos team really needs to score it here unless he be on the back foot. Ball's gonna get kicked out. So touchback. So these Chaos team really is trying. Wow, he wants to get the touchdown real fast. So ball's gonna be handed off to the block beast man right there. And he's gonna just cage up right here, but he'll be a little susceptible to. You know, that, that guy with wrestle and strip ball and dauntless and tackle and all this other stuff. But I guess at this point, Spartaco is a little bit worried about the wizard. And so, going to give it off to this man here. So if he gets struck down by lightning, then so be it. Won't be losing out on his real main ball carry right there. But now, as you can see, the power of the wizard, guys. I mean, going to be playing it a little bit more differently than he would normally. There's going to be a big injury there. As I said before, Chaos Team really needs to get these going. 
if he's gonna have any real shot at this. And uh, there we go. Gonna get the hurt going. One, two, blows. Doesn't even need to get the follow up on the piling on. Just gonna get the hit in. And gonna be able to get him down. Oops, I'm gonna change it back. And gonna get another armor value break. And will he get more injury? Yes, mark that up in the yes column. It's gonna be more injuries. And this time again, on the plus one is straight mighty blow. It just is his time. It is his time. So there we go, another Skaven player out, but the death injury! The big death injury, and so gonna have to be used the apothecary on him, and didn't actually reroll that <laughs> miss dodge, thinking that he'd be just be okay. And unfortunately, that is not the case in Blood Bowl. Sometimes you're absolutely gonna get your armor value broken, and you're gonna get that 1 in 6 chance of getting that death entry, and right there, he's gonna get. He's gonna get hit by it. The pot carry though will come out. And. Uh, Chaos team will be no worse for wear, but still, that is the apothecary being used right there on a big beast man. Who would have liked to stay in there because he's got the big mighty blow and piling on and all that other great stuff, but at least he's still gonna have his other beast men there with the tackle ability, so. Skaven team cannot. Rest easy. And there we go. Gonna get the assist here for the two die block coming up on him. Then likely gonna blitz here all along the right side for more mighty blow and the piling on Axiones. Don't forget, guys, ladies and gentlemen, they are fighting it out for money, glory, and a ticket to the 2018 Global 2 World Cup. We'll see who's gonna go on through. Crystal Hunter or Spartaco? I'd almost love to see Spartaco making it through. He did come in to third place in the 2016 World Cup for Blood Bowl 2, so we'd love to see him back in there for another try at the glory, but did just fall short. But did still end up getting third place for his troubles. Love to get back in there and would love to see about getting. His name emblazoned in the skies. And right now, if it wasn't for the Skaven team scoring it there, then these six injuries right here, or five injuries there, but did get another one and get a out. So six injuries in total, but five in the injury box. Chaos team looking pretty good, but Wizard still in hand for Crystal Hunter. This is definitely not out of reach as of yet. Maybe forced to use it in the second in this end of the first half, but we'll see though. I think the I think the better play is just to hold on to it and wait for it in the second half. Sure if the Chaos team scores it one to one, then not a big deal. You still have the wizard in hand. It's still gonna be the Chaos team's position half in the second half. And he may be able to turn the tide in that way, but he really needs to keep his rats alive if he's gonna have any sort of chance at doing any of that business. Ball moving along the left side, just trying to get his way through as the lone gutter runner is standing in his way. And I don't think we're going to see the wizard here by the end of the first half. That would just be not a great move but there there we go we're gonna see the fireball nonetheless so there we go we'll be using it and hey he's gonna get a nice big injury and crystal hunter is gonna get more out of this and look at that it is absolutely paying off now and that is tremendous the ball is out on the ground and not only that boy the fireball working out great and this is why you don't cage up against a fireball wizard this could happen right here, getting the casualty, getting a few guys knocked down. And we'll have a chance at the ball. Yes, he is going to get the ball after having to re-roll that. And he's absolutely gone, gone away. And this is going to be an easy touchdown. I guess this is why you use the fireball. Because if that is able to go through, then the wizard will be all but paid off. And this 
defense is just going to be no way that he can stop this. He is absolutely out of range. He may just get marked up by a couple of beastmen, but without tackle, it would still just be a 1 in 36 that he's going to get nuffled there. So, this is just going to be an easy dodge away for yet another score for the Skaven team. They're going to go up 2 to nothing here. And the Chaos team is going to be just scrambling here just to get back there. GFIs like crazy. At least they'll be able to mark him up one time. But would love to mark him up at least two because then he doesn't need to contend with the Blitz afterwards. And then no need for the dodge away. Here's the Blitz. Defender stumbles. That's good enough. There's the piling on with the mighty blow. The claw is moot on this. And will be able to get the KO right on that. Just got the 7, but with the mighty blow hit, we'll be converting that to the KO. The claw palm didn't cause an injury. It's an outrage. It absolutely is. Absolutely is. But there you have it. I mean, this is why we're seeing so many agility teams. It's kind of what I said in previous tournaments. Sure, we're seeing a lot of Chaos Dwarves win the matches, but it's because the injuries have just been so brutal. But if there are no injuries on these agility teams, then this is kind of what happens. Then agility teams are just kind of OP at this point. Two to nothing. Crystal Hunter. Gonna go up to the nothing on Spotico's Chaos Team, the very much famed coach. And he will have another shot at this two turn touchdown, actually. Not out of the question for a Chaos Team, but definitely not an easy one. As we are set to have yet another kickoff, Chaos Team really needs to recover. All the Wizards has been used, so. Now, this is the time to shine. And loads of injuries being caused here on the Skaven team. So the Chaos team has, has been living up to their kill team name, but is losing the game. Unlike the other games in which, what, Chaos Dwarf team really didn't do much against the Dwarf team, then... Orcs didn't really do much against the Amazon team. So, I mean, it was just one of those things where... The other games, they didn't see the injuries, but this game, we're seeing lots of armor value breaks, and we're seeing lots of injuries, but... Skavens, they're still up 2 to nothing. Playing Skaven... Offense, that's what it is. Skaven... Ways. Anything the Skaven team is paying for this game in blood. But as you guys have pointed out, no permanent injuries for any of these guys. So he's paying for it in blood for this game only so far. So Crystal Hunter is definitely loving that. Here's the pickup. And he's just going to hold the ball. And there's going to be a foul coming up. Why not? This is why we get 30 player, guys. You need to lay the boot in. Just gonna get a, a stun on that, but no call from the ref, so we'll see him in the later bits. As the Skaven team really needs to stop this two turn touchdown, so we're gonna see a blitz and then lots of Skaven team piled up on all of these four receivers here. They're a little bit too close for my taste right here. I would have liked to spread them out a little bit more. Because as you can see here, look, you just put rats right here and here, and suddenly they're both covered. <laughs> Not like the rats don't have a lot of movement allowance anyways. Oh, and it's the return of the shadowing gutter runner right there. <laughs> Good point out there, Juanian. And we have seen just how crazy the shadowing gutter runner can really be. Like I said, if you haven't seen that match, 
with the Plutonians against the Skava team. That was just an absolute, I don't know, comical game. <laughs> the, the shadowing gutter runner just won't leave the ball carrier alone. Ooh, gonna fail the GFI there and just gonna be able to make it there, but should be able to get a two die block now. I guess this is what the Chaos team had envisioned when he had put his guys in this way so that he can have a two die block and not need to depend on a two die blitz to spring open one of his receivers. Not too hilarious for Jimmy. <laughs> I can only imagine the rage. There's the two die block and we'll be able to take him down due to the armor value break. KO on top of that. And uh, we'll be getting the blitz. It is going to be on the sidestepper. But it doesn't even matter which way he sidestep at this point. But it will be able to at least hit him. And push him away. And failed the GFI. And with the reroll already being used on the GFI earlier. That will end any touchdown hopes that the Chaos team may have had for this game. Oh, eh. Uh, I cannot believe that, but nonetheless, that's Blood Bowl. That's Blood Bowl, baby. Spartaco is in trouble now. He is down two to nothing. He does have the possession, but he's gonna have to try to pry the ball away from a very dangerous offense of the Skaven team. Luckily, though, two KOs did not come back to the Skaven team. And loads of injuries will mean that he's going to be just facing off against seven Skaven defense. So he should be able to get this touchdown quite quickly. And the Chaos team should try to score it as quick as he can. So he should spend at least three turns to get this touchdown. And get the, and get the ball try here. So the Skaven team should get it back on turn 11, turn 12. Oh, but the riot, oh, that is going to absolutely help the Skaven team. Not what Spartaco wanted to see. The coach, if this was the NBA, if this was, if this was the basketball, this would be the coach. The rage, the rage. Oh, the rage. There's the first few hits on the front line of the Skaven team and all of them living a bit of a charmed life at this point because just a few pushes and a non armor value break there on this left side there's another push not what the chaos team needs really needs to whittle them down to nothingness if he wants to have a chance at this but two to nothing this is going to be quite difficult if anything he needs to just take it to where they have nobody left on the pitch and sure they'll be having the offense yet again but with not enough guys on the pitch then he should be able to get the ball back and he should be able to get another touchdown to maybe square it up 2-2. Two to two. So it's definitely not out of the question. There's another KO. Mighty blow piling on. Winning on the entries but not winning on the scoreboard. Oh man. That is the danger. Every time you're playing against any type of Skaven team like that, they're just like, you're killing all their damn rats, but they're winning the game. And suddenly, you just don't feel as happy. Yeah, well, I see you there. I see your point there, Wayfair, but of course, Chaos Team nonetheless has to score it quickly so that he doesn't need to play defense for too long because the because the gutter runners they can definitely just play keep away from your guys for quite a long bit so the chaos team getting some receivers out gutter runners need to react to it and is covering them at the time. But of course, Chaos Team is likely going to take three turns to score. Doesn't want to risk too much here. And 
So we will likely just see that this Chaos team is trying to whittle down this Chaos, I mean this Skaven team, so that he'll have an easier time at getting the ball back once he does score it here. And I really don't see it going any other way. Chaos team should score it, barring anything at this point. It's up so much in numbers and he's absolutely mangling this Skaven team on the pitch, but it's just... They're just up two to nothing and should be enough to win the game, you'd suspect. There's the blitz here, three die blitz with tackle and the mighty blow. But we'll get the defender down die. And he will get him down and get the big hit and get the KO. Nicely done. More KOs. We'll take it at this point. But the Chaos team really needs to see some crosses over the head. Not just the bells. But again, at this point, we'll take it. One less rat on the pitch. And not only that, it is a gutter runner. There we go. Line rat moving in there. He's got block and fend. We'll make things a little bit more difficult. Gonna dodge away from danger. Gonna get the shadowing. Gonna run it right there into the face. Yes. Does have sidestep, so it's gonna be a very, very safe gutter runner. There's the fan here. He's gonna have to probably get the blitz off and then dodge away if worse come to worse. I think at this point, you can't just You can't just dodge away though, because the shadowing gutter runner will be all over him. There's just no way. A six movement allows Beastman to get away from that gutter runner. <laughs> he'll have to roll some. He'll have to roll some ones and twosies on the dice. But the blitz coming out over here on the midfield, and so I'm I'm a little bit wondering. I'm a little I'm a little bit curious what we're gonna see. From Spartaco, is he really gonna dodge away from the shadowing gun runner? We saw how well that worked out for the Bretonian team. There's a nice big foul there, and will cause yet another KO in the dodge away. And the uh, should be shadowing okay there. Yes, we'll be able to get back in there. Oh, shadowing it again. Ooh. Nope, nope, up, oh, oh, come back, come back. Shadowing. He does have two heads. These are all just two plus dodges, but still. Gutter Runner is relentless on his pursuit as he's dodging away. And able to get away and die. Ooh, fail to dodge there. And so I think that will end all of the dodges. Or maybe not. He's going to throw it against the tackle zone. And he gets the pass off with the catch. The catch is no good. But will get the re-roll. And he will get the 4 plus pass out against the tackle zone. Nicely done. Spotsico opting to just throw it there by the end. Yes, indeed. So good for the Skaven team if he does get the doubles for it on the gutter runners. But man alive, Spartaco keeps himself alive with that nice quick and easy touchdown. I wouldn't say easy, nice quick touchdown at least. And it is going to be four more turns left to play here for Spartaco to get that ball back. Skaven team just needs to play keep away. Just needs to play keep away. Can he do it, guys? Hot potato, hot potato. Can he play keep? Plenty. Can he play keep away? Crystal Hunter here on chat says that he was pretty much raging after that pass, and he felt so sick after it. But he is up still two to one. But now this Skaven team really needs to play precise. 
he can't afford to get nuffled and he cannot afford to get caught up to. Skaven team being down so many in numbers. Chaos team will just present a big wall for the Skaven team to try to penetrate through. And will the Skaven team let off on the gas or will he just go for it? Looks like though the Skaven team is not going to let off the gas. It's going to open up a little bit of an opening here for the Scudder Runner to scamper through. I've actually done this before with my Dark Elf team. I was up myself 2 to nothing, and and the other player and the other coach just scored on on the beginning of the first half there just like that 2 to 1 and then I decided well with my Dark Elf team I'm just gonna go for it and just get the touchdown yet again but it blew up in my face and I wasn't able to get the touchdown he was able to get 2 to 2 and then overtime he was able to come back and win the game so it is definitely not out of the out of reach for this chaos team. Yeah, it was a four plus pass. Because it would have been it would have normally been a three plus pass from there, but with the tax zone made it four plus. So now this chaos team, he should be put up the big, great wall of chaos. As there's the blitz, can't let this gutter runner get away, and we'll get a big KO on the gutter runner. And that definitely, if it, if it wasn't making Crystal Hunter sick before, this is definitely making him sick now because now who is he gonna throw the ball to? Nobody except for maybe the other thrower and so this gutter runner he's just gonna play keep away he's just he's lightly just gonna hang out in the backfield put a big screen up as much as he possibly can wait to the last minute and maybe just get a punt off at the end or either that or just hang out by the corner of the end zone as we've seen in the past so some options left for the skating team There's another KO. Skaven team just trying to get out of danger and not going to be able to do so. That's, that's always a danger when you're playing a Skaven team. These line rats, they just have three agility, not like their gutter runner brethren. With the four agility, just three agility. And so you're going to see them miss those dodges. They don't want to get based up, but they're not exactly equipped with dodging away either. And of course, if Spartaco would have missed, would have whiffed on that pass, then the game would have been over. Skavity would have been absolutely been able to win. But now, suddenly, Chaos Team is still in this one, but just barely. He needs to catch up to that gutter runner quick as he can and get that touchdown. Three more turns left to play. And finally, he's going to be able to break through the screen that was set up by the Skaven. Not much of a screen, but a screen nonetheless. And the only thing that he could do. Line Rat is going to get punched in the nose. And we'll be okay. There's another Blitz. Just going to be a push. Spartaco. Still feeling confident, still playing well. And that's the difference here between good players and bad. They keep it together when the odds are against them. And right here, no, no, uh, no real signs of rage from this Chaos team. Just kind of keeping it together, playing as well as he possibly can. It's all about the mental, guys. As I've said before, Blood Bowl it is definitely part skill, part luck, and part... Mental, if you can keep it together, keep your wits about you, then you should be okay, even if you're down. <laughs> you guys are right about that. What's up with that piling on? Victims to their to their own bloodlust. So there's going to be yet another screen coming up from the Scave of the Team. Two more turns left to play, and 
I don't know, but I don't know if Word has reached Spartaco, but he's down two to one. He needs to score it. Beastman needs to get there. He's hanging back. Where's he going with his beast man? They're going the wrong way. They need to go forward, not backwards. Where are they going? But he's gonna hang back, and I guess he's content with just keeping guys back there, but he needs to stop that gutter runner from holding the ball. There's a little bit of a blitz through. He's gonna have to do a couple of GFIs. There we go. At first he was thinking about just doing it one at a time, but he was like, well, you know what? I have to do two GFIs whether I like it or not. So go ahead and click them both. And he will get to the gutter runner. And that is a tackle beast man right on top of him. So now only Nuffle can save the Chaos team at this point. Gutter runner is likely gonna dodge away. And if he does get away, he's gonna see the punt. And that's kind of why the Chaos team did put Beastmen in the backfield here to prepare for the punt. But there is an opening here on this right side. If he can dodge away, then he might be able to dodge a wrench. There's the move away. He's going towards the backfield. GFI's here all the way. Yes, not going to get nuffled here. Too bad he doesn't have sidestep on that gutter runner. So we should see the blitz on him. Five, six, seven, eight. So we should see the push out here. So it's still a possibility. I would have liked to see the punt instead here by Crystal Hunter to at least force the pickup and then force the pass and then force all the other stuff that would com come about from the punt. But opting to go and put himself in the backfield there and easy surf actually. So would have been a little bit better to put him right here so they don't get easily surfed out if he had sidestep that would have been a good move I think keeping him out of the end zone would have been a little bit better but does get the blitz off defender down die and look at that will keep him in bounds look at that not gonna push him out of bounds and just gonna get there and get the touchdown done here Spotico gets it but I think I definitely would have loved to see the punt there instead Spartaco finds a way and keeps the rat in balance and the scatter is gonna be okay oh man I need to turn that off I thought I was I thought I turned that off oh it's nightbot isn't it Sorry about that, Satterfield. <laughs> I, you still do emotes, you just can't spam them, I guess. <laughs> and Spartaco gets the tie 2-2 two to two after a big blitz, keeping the rat in bounds, and the ball landing in a great spot for the blitzer to continue on, pick the ball up after a couple of GFIs, and gets the touchdown. Big time plays coming out from big time coaches. Spotsico proving that he was once a great NAF coach and he still is. And the Skaven team cannot believe it. And right, Crystal Hunter does point out he needed a pal right there. That was not a tackle blitzing beast man right then and there. He needed the pal and he got it 30% on that. So now turn 16 coming up. Riot. Hey, both teams are going to gain a turn. So. Will the Skava team win this in regulation? Hey, this is not over yet, but as you can see there, there's only one gutter runner on the pitch. And it's not like it's an easy one turner for him. But it appears that the, I don't think the gutter runner is in any particular position to get this one move touchdown or, or anything like that. But it is going to now be a two turn touchdown try, but oh, after the skull there. That ends all hope, so this is going into overtime. 
This is going into OT, but not before some hits by this Chaos team. And things are unraveling quite quickly. Things are absolutely unraveling quite, quite quickly here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh time. And the reroll was used. And that was the last reroll by the Skaven team. So, pressure is coming. The pressure is absolutely mounting for the Skaven team. Can he? He was up to the nothing. And suddenly, it is just getting out of hand here. The injuries have caught up to the Skaven team. And suddenly, it is two to two. Suddenly, it is two to two. And at this point, the Hunter does make a point here. He would be in a bad position in overtime regardless if he's receiving or not. But if he does not get the reception here in the overtime period, then he is absolutely lost. Only a miracle would save him. So he needs to have the overtime coin toss go his way if he has any, any hope of doing anything with the ball. Line rat, and that is just about how this end of the game is going for this Skaven team after a hot start. It is fizzling, it is absolutely fizzling. Oh boy, this is all the marbles here on the coin toss. He really needs to get it. Crystal Hunter, if he doesn't, then the Skaven team is all but lost. Only a miracle would save him. And will he get the miracle? And it looks like, yes indeed, the Rat or the Baron. Skaven team will receive the ball. Hallelujah. And not only that, a bunch of the KO'd Rats does come back into play. So we're going to see seven Rats on the pitch. And all you need is at least two to have a chance. But not only that, these gutter runners are back. He's going to have three gutter runners and a thrower. So this is definitely looking okay now for this Skaven team. I mean, when you play the Skaven team, you got to be used to playing down a few guys there. And so this is this is going to be about about normal. This is about normal for him. 10 movement allowance gutter runner is going to be there on the dance floor. He's ready to... He's ready to do the moves. He's ready to do the moves. <laughs> yes, indeed. This is where you really would love to see Sprint on that 10 move and allow Scutter Runner. Throw Rock! And it's gonna be the Chaos. Gonna be suffering that throw Rock and the ball's gonna bounce around in bounce. And uh, it is gonna be right there in the face where the thrower can maybe get to it. But unfortunately, it won't be the case. So the Gutter Runner on the right side, he's gonna get the pickup and likely gonna do the throw to the other man on this left side this is absolutely wide open here just needs to get a blitz here on this beast man to pry things open and then quite possibly yes he's gonna get the one die blitz skaven team has a shot now just needs to get through no nufflings here if he gets nuffled at any point in this combination it is gg there's the gutter runner. He's just in range. Two plus pass with a two plus catch. Coming up. Yes, he's got it. Both accounts. And he's off to the races, ladies and gentlemen. Will this be enough, though? He's just getting there. He's just going to be short by one. But he is going to be in range for this touchdown. And, and, and the way that this Chaos team has aligned themselves in this kickoff, I do believe he is absolutely going to be a bit out of range here. Yes, he is. So there we go. There is going to be really nothing left but Nuffle to save this Chaos team after playing so brilliantly. He lines up all of his Beastmen in the front line and that is it. He's only going to be able to just touch 
<laughs> the gun runner. And the touch will only come from a non-tackler as well, so... What is going on here? The throw rock prize open the channel for him, and not only that, gonna be a tackler going down, and the other tackler, he's too far to the right, so all he can do is just hit the gutter runner down the middle, and it open things up so the other beast can get there, but only a 1 in 36 can stop the Skaven team from winning the game. That kickoff lineup there was the big hammer blow. That should not have happened from Spartacus Caliber. That lineup right there just killed him. I mean, he just had gave himself no chance there at the end. Oh man, and, and quite honestly, I mean, Spartacus could say that, sure, the throw rock opened up the channel and then after that, he got the blitz in there and got the handoff and the throw and all that stuff. Well, no handoffs were done, but I mean, in the end, it was Spartacus. Well, he was his own worst enemy. 39 on the value breaks, though, for this Chaos team. And boy, you talk about loads of injuries. There was definitely lots of it today. Six injuries with 11 KOs inflicted. Wow. That was more than enough to quite possibly crush the Skaven team, but time and time again, the Skaven team, it's just you go up in a big lead like that, and you just put the ball into the hands of your playmakers, your gutter runners, and that is all you really need to do. Man! Spartaco, his own worst enemy. And with that, we'll falter with the dice. I mean, you can't say it wasn't the dice that killed him. He did fairly okay. Block dice. He did roll a few more skulls and a few more pushes than he would have loved, but in the end, it wasn't the dice. It was just the setup. It was just the plain setup. And with that, Crystal Hunter will join the ranks of the few, but there will be 64 there will be a total of 64 moving on to the Blood Bowl 2 World Cup. Wow. But there you go. First four tickets given out from the Champions Ladder will be given out to Crystal Hunter, Unger, Ducky, and Notorious NOOB. Not only that, but I did receive word Jimmy Fantastic did also get the MML ticket along with two other players from the MML. So. I will get more information about that to come later on. But yes, that does end the coverage, guys. How about that? Wayne Ferrer, Spartaco was his own worst enemy. Man, you sound so sagacious, but so true. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm not wanting to harp on anything like that, but it just, it just goes to show that the. It's the little things in Blood Bowl. When you're playing at this high of a level, it's those little things that really makes a difference. And right there, you you just you forgot about the 10 move and allowance gutter runner. And right there, he puts all those guys basically on the front line. And he and he gets and he gets absolutely crushed because of it. <laughs> Meanwhile, meanwhile on the chat, well, Spartaco deserved not to go through anyways with that turn 14 piling on. <laughs> yeah, but you have to say though, he, yeah, it is difficult to keep everything together, but Spartaco up until that point kept it together, kept himself in there, scoring 2-1 to one methodically. And even we even with the right in the second half, he lost the turn. So I mean, it, everything was stacked against him. But in the end, you know, he kept it together as much as he could. But just when it kind of counted the most, he should have just kept it together a little bit more. And after the fact, Spartaco, I mean, you could say that yeah, the throw rock opened things up a little bit easier for these gutter runners to run on through. But in the end, it was just the setup that just killed him. But 
there we go. World Cup tickets. At least 100 euros going the way of all of our contestants here, but 250 euros for second, 500 euros for first. That is what they'll be playing for, along with Champions Cup glory, guys, and recognition. But right now, I think it is going to be this is going to be a tough one to call. Wood Elves versus Dwarves. Ducky is definitely not out of the woods yet, still facing off yet against another Bashy team. Lots of line linemen there, the the, the uh, long beards for the Dwarven team with mighty blow and tackle. So you better watch out for that, Ducky. Not only that, but Amazon team, lots of blodge, lots of dodge here against the Skaven team, who did suffer a lot of injuries, but still has a full complement. So. I mean, definitely going to be one of those games in which could go either way. But at this moment, I am definitely still feeling Ducky's team. I think he's he's got it. I mean, he's uh, he's playing well. And unlike the past tournaments in which I was just like, eh, I'm not really high on Ducky right now. But this tournament, I'm definitely high on him. He may falter anyways because I think the goal was to just, to just make it to the World Cup. But at, at the same time, how can he stop now? I mean, the Dwarves... He should be able to get that win there, and right here, I'm going to go with... I think Ungern has been playing quite well for the Amazon team. But I think the Skaven team, a little bit better in my opinion. Just a little bit. And I am... <laughs> yeah, I do have a little bit of a bias towards the, the, the agility finesse teams, but I mean... I just, I just feel in them a little bit more. I mean, I just, that's just how it is. <laughs> yes, indeed. And so that will be it, guys. Join me again next Sunday, 6.30 GMT, as we cover the semifinals. A couple of matches there will be played. So make sure you come and see me real quick because I just have those two games and then the championship match to follow coming up in the next couple of we will have the Champions Cup 15 and I will be a little bit busier but I'm gonna still try to come out with the first round coverage but it's gonna be a lot more difficult I have people coming in and so it makes me casting a whole lot more difficult so I may not even get around to the first round I'm gonna just try to get as much as I can but it will be more difficult so thank you guys for joining Wayne Fair always a pleasure thanks for subscribing and watching all my videos. Crocs and Max, always a pleasure. Juanian, always a pleasure as well. Satterfield, thanks for joining me. All you out there, uh, thank you so much for that. R3341, really appreciate that. Crystal Hunter, always a pleasure. Good to see everyone else in here. And uh, hopefully, guys, I will see you all next time for more Blood Bowl action along with strategy, role playing games to come on my channel. And let's see who we're going to host here by the end I'm going to give it to Andy Mr. Andy Davo there so there we go thanks again guys and take care